Hello YouTube, it's Nurse T and I am back with another video. In this video, I will be giving you guys a three month update on my progress on my permanent unit as well as the tips that I have found helpful to help me survive night shift. First off, starting with the update, um, I am loving my unit. Um, everything is still going well. I love the patients. I love, love my schedule. <laughs> Um, I'm learning a lot. I'm settled in. I've been working by myself for three months, a little over three months now, and everything is going well. I have no regrets on the decision that I have made. Now getting into the tips that I have found helpful with surviving night shift. The first and most important tip is to schedule your days back to back. Now I work usually monday tuesday wednesday or tuesday wednesday thursday and i have my days back to back no breaks i usually don't well i don't work weekends at all and that's because my unit does not require um the night shift nurses to work on the weekends and that's because we have what they call win nurses which are nurses that only work weekends so they have their staff for the weekends so the other nurses are needed during the week so i work during the week now the benefit of having your days back to back is consistency and what i mean by consistency is when you have your days back to back when you come back to work on that second or third night if your patients are still there that you had on your first night you have those same patients well at least that's how they do it on my unit we kind of keep our same um patient load we don't flip around the unit and all of that that's doesn't make sense i know some units that rotate their nurses um from side to side but if we're working back to back days we will get our same patients that we had the night before and that actually makes it better for you you will have an easier night you're already familiar with your patient and you will just know what to expect everything will be so much better if you do it that way also if you work your days back to back it's just easier to put yourself on night shift quote unquote and then after you work your three days you're off for the other four days of the week and you can be a regular person so that is a lot easier for me when you have that break like i work like two days and then i have a day off and then work that third day that day off is kind of like a waste because you really don't know what to do with yourself. When you get off that morning, you're sleeping. And then when you get up, you kind of don't know whether to stay up or go to sleep. So it's just best to just do them all back to back, get it out of the way and be done. I'm looking down at my notebook. My next tip, I would say what I have found helpful is um, you know, up the night before my three day stretch. And the reason why I do this is so that I can get my body on the schedule of working the three nights that I have coming up. And to stay up, I'll usually just cook, I'll um, clean, um, I'll do YouTube videos, I'll do whatever I need to do to stay up or things that I need to do around the house to get done or whatever. I'll just do that, save that for that night before, and then I'll just stay up all night and do all of that. Now... When my husband and my daughter gets up the next morning to get ready for work in school, that's when I go to sleep. And that leads me into my next tip, which is sleep during the day. There is no way around it. Um, some people function without going to sleep before their night shift. I have no idea <laughs> how they do that. I am not that type of person. I have to sleep before my shift. So what I do, I get ready to go to bed when they get up. And I usually sleep in my guest room. And so in my guest room, I have blackout curtains. Now, I usually use those to darken the room, of course, and to make it look like it's nighttime in the room. Now, another alternative to the blackout curtains is like the... Um, face shields like the little sleeping mask you can use that so you know if you do wake up it'll still be pitch black dark or if you don't want to do either one of those you could do what we did back in the day or like my daughter still does till this day she takes sheets 
or blankets or whatever and she just throws them up to her window during the day if she wants her room to be dark that works as well i've also heard of people taking black trash bags and taping it behind their blind and that works as well so whatever you need to do to get the room really dark so that it is nighttime to make your body think that it's nighttime to get you some sleep that's what you do when you are actually at work you can do some things that help you get through your night a little bit easier the first tip for that i would say is to arrive at least 10 to 15 minutes early now i do this so that i can at least get a look at my patient load as well as my um my medications for my patients i take a look at the mar for all of my patients and at least write down the medication administration times now i do this just in case there's a medication that i can give when i am going into the room getting a report from the day nurse i do that to save time it's called bundling your care they taught you this in nursing school it still works in the real world you want to do as much as possible while you're in your patient rooms so you don't have all of that back and forth interrupting the patient all through the night, what have you. So whatever you can do while you're going in the room, it's best to get that done. And coming in early actually helps with that. Now, my last tip as for when you are at work is once you get your patient load, kind of move into your patient care as quickly as possible. I say this because it's a possibility that you may get more patients throughout the night. When I get into work, I take a look at the number of patients that I have. If I already have my six patients because our ratio on my floor is six to one, I know that I'm not getting any more patients at night. Now, if I have four to five patients, there is a possibility that I'm going to get one or two more patients during that night. So I move as fast as I can anticipating the fact that I may get another patient. You may not get a, another patient, but there is room for more. So you want to already have all of your assessments done, all of your patient care, anything like that out of the way. Um, I can tell you so many times where I've only been at work for like maybe 30 to 45 minutes and here comes my brand new patient. And I'm like, wait, I haven't even got a report. I haven't even seen my patients whatever but it's just you have to move like you're gonna get more patients in my floor is very busy so i know that it's a possibility that i could get patients coming up from surgery late i've had patients come up as late as 11 p.m also i i could get a patient from the emergency room like if a patient fell or something like that or they need a bed they could come up to my floor or from the ICU if they need that ICU bed and that patient is ready to transition to a lower level of care unit I can get one of those patients as well so I kind of have to pace myself anticipating the fact that I can get more patients it just depends on how your floor works but that's just a tip as to how my how it works on my floor that takes care of all my tips as well as my update for my um transitioning on my unit if you have any questions please post them below remember to like comment and subscribe thank you guys so much for watching Bye.